Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between a professor and a student. Uh, Professor Wilson, is this a good time to talk? Sure. What can I help you with? Well, um, I'm a little confused about something from the reading you assigned yesterday. You know, the chapter about the salinity of ocean water. That's the content of mineral salts in the ocean, right? Yes. Well, okay. So it said there are a lot of mineral salts in the ocean. I think they compared it to a tall building. Right. If all the mineral salts were removed from the ocean and poured out evenly over the Earth's land surface, it would be as high as a 40-story building. Yeah, that's a lot of salt. Okay, and it said that the rainwater is absorbed through the soil? Then the water, it said the water dissolves mineral salts from rocks in the Earth's soil? Uh-huh, right. And this water ends up in rivers that eventually deposit the dissolved salts into the ocean. Hmm. I remember that's what you said in class yesterday, that mineral salts are continually being dumped into the ocean. But the book says that the ocean's salinity has been constant for hundreds of millions of years. So isn't that a contradiction? Doesn't it mean the ocean should still be getting saltier today? Well, no. There are also ways the ocean loses its mineral salt. Clams are one example. Clams? Right, clams. A clam is just one of many sea creatures that extracts mineral salts from ocean water. They use salt to build their shells. I'll be talking about this more in tomorrow's lecture. Number 31. What is the conversation mainly about? Number 32. Why do the speakers mention the example of a 40-story tall building? Number 33. According to the conversation, where do the mineral salts in the ocean come from? Number 34. What does the professor say about clams? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Bill. How come you were so late for class today? Oh, hi, Donna. I had a situation with my bicycle again. What happened? The chain fell off again when I was on my way to school. It's happened before? Yeah, a couple of times. I fix it each time, but I'm afraid it's just going to keep breaking down. Oh, I wouldn't worry. It probably just needs a small adjustment. That's not uncommon. Yeah, but it's not just that. Seems like every week there's something new. See, two weeks ago the back tire went flat. So I bought a new one, and would you believe it, the new tire went flat too, on that very same day. And you know, it's not even an old bike. Well, you know, it can't all be just bad luck. Maybe you're just, I don't know, tough on bikes? Do you watch where you're going? Donna, you know me. Caution's my middle name. I don't go too fast. I avoid potholes and broken glass. Well, I don't know then. But on the positive side, at least you've been learning things about how bicycles work and how to fix them. Yeah, maybe. But I'm not planning on becoming a bike mechanic. And to be honest, I'd rather not know how things work. I just want to be safe. Number 35. What are the speakers mainly discussing? Number 36. Why does the man think his bicycle will continue to break down? Number 37. 
Number 37. What does the woman say might be the reason the man's bicycle keeps breaking down? Number 38. What does the woman say is one positive result of the man's experiences with his bicycle?